Welcome back to Going Walkabout. Day tripping, getting to the heart of Joshua Tree. Sitting in our Cobb Cottage in Dorset in the 80s, we would listen to the U2 Joshua Tree album, playing it over and over again. We wondered what this place Joshua Tree was like and why it inspired the spiritual music. Fast forward to four years ago, Kiwi telling me to listen to the Foo Fighters playing I Want to Get Outside as they are framed in the Joshua Tree desert landscape. Certainly makes you understand how a place like Rancho de la Luna got started and gained so much traction. With a free day, a recent storm bringing picturesque snow to the local mountains, we decided to get outside and visit Joshua Tree for ourselves. You'll want to stay to the end so you can see one of our best surprises from the trip. From La Quinta, it's only about an hour drive via the 10 freeway. We'll be getting off at Indian Canyons for the scenic route. We'll pass the windmills and head towards San Gregorio Mountains, making a right on 29 Palms Highway and heading up the winding road, which will take us through Morongo and Yucca Valley. We'll turn right on Park Drive, which will take us to one of the three entrances to the park. To give you some clarity on the tree situation, Joshua trees can grow to over seven feet and have one trunk, whereas the yucca trees are much shorter, have several trunks and many long pointy leaves. So we just went by the visitor center and like an old trading post. And this road should take us into the park entrance. It, it, I guess it will take us in, as Mr. Steele said, to the park entrance. The park is 800,000 acres, with over 2.1 million people visiting it yearly. It's a fusion of the Mojave Desert and the Colorado Desert, one of the few places in the United States where Joshua trees thrive. Named Joshua trees by the Mormon settlers back in the 1800s. They thought the trees looked like Joshua reaching up in prayer to the heavens. Hey, entrance we had, yay, so we don't have to go back. There's the official sign, and there's actually a queue. And I believe it's supposed to be $30. What does it say, honey? Can you see it? Per person, 15, motorcycle, private vehicle, $30, just like this. We were delighted to find getting older has some benefits, as we only paid $20 for our car and got a senior pass to boot that can be used at all national parks. So we're not quite up to where they have Heart Rock and Skull Rock and all those places, but I think this is ever so pretty and um, love the way it all looks like the Giants Rock Garden. Very fun. And I am trying to find the Joshua tree that was on the Joshua tree album with you too. I'm trying to find that exact tree. So that's making it really fun as well. So lots of things to do on the trip out here today, which make it a very fulfilling day tripping. who now thinks that he's not only just the driver, but the art director has told me I need to get out of the car and do a video of this area, this particular area, because he said, this is gorgeous. It is. I mean, you can totally see the Jurassic Park dinosaurs come thumping down that little valley there. It's important to observe the rules in this natural habitat. In summer, bring water, at least one gallon per person. And remember, there is little to no cell phone coverage throughout the whole park. The rock piles began underground. As a result of volcanic activity, they were pushed up to the Earth's surface. Once there, the granite cooled and it formed the horizontal and vertical cracks. Add time and water, both of which weathered the rocks and rounded the edges and left us with this enchanting landscape. As you're driving around, you see people climbing on the top of the rocks. I don't know if you can see them on the top of the rock here, just in front of us. But there's rock climbers everywhere. Apparently this is the place they come when other places are snowed in. These guys look like they're gonna be rappelling down. They climbed the top and uh, now they're throwing the ropes down. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, they'll be rappelling down that rock pretty soon. Kind of a perfect day for something like that. And further down on the, one of the cracks here, there's somebody that's in the middle of climbing down as well, or maybe they're climbing up. Pretty magnificent. I can hear the song in my head looking out over this landscape. I have climbed the highest mountains. I have run through the fields only to be with you, only to be with you.
As we end this loop, I can only think, wow, what a fun and enchanting landscape, thanks to the work of Minerva Hoyt in the 1930s, an activist that persuaded Franklin D. Roosevelt to proclaim Joshua Tree a national monument in 1936. And a bonus for a cold day, you can see everything from the comfort of your warm car. So a great trip for oldies like us. On to Pappy and Harriet's Honky Tonk. You'll take the 62 to Pioneer Town Road. It's about a two to three mile drive up that road to Pappy and Harriet's, which is adjacent to the Pioneer Town sign on the right hand side. Adjacent to the old movie set of Pioneer Town is Pappy and Harriet's. Established in 1946, you can wet your whistle at the bar, order some bodacious hamburgers, or listen to live music. We were told that in April, when Coachella is in town, many of the musicians pop over to do sets at Pappy and Harriet's, like none other than Sir Paul McCartney, the original day tripper. Great day. We feel we did find what we were looking for. We can understand why musicians are drawn to this austere yet peaceful desert. The rock formations, blue skies, limitless vistas, open your mind and make your heart want to sing. Thanks for sharing the day with us. We wish you and yours a very merry holiday season. We will see you in the new year where we'll be in mainland Mexico for three months. If you're enjoying the videos, please like or subscribe. Feliz Navidad.